Good afternoon, this is Rich Nelson with Allendale. Covering the wrap-up comments here. Today is Friday, February 10th here. As far as grains, one thing we need to keep in mind as far as today's action, of course, uh, on the outside markets, we did have a little negative influence uh, with some concerns about Greece and such, certainly, uh, certainly pushing the U.S. dollar higher. And almost all commodity markets, uh, a little mixed to lower here today as far as a general trend. So with that in mind, we, we will note that uh, corn finished down about five and a quarter cents. Uh, beans actually finished up a penny and a half, and, while wheat uh, finished down 16. Wheat led the way down here uh, today, as, as, as we also saw pressure yesterday from wheat as well. Some concerns about all those wheat tenders, wheat sales, which were done uh, Thursday, I say Thursday morning and Wednesday night, uh, which we missed out on. And it uh, looks like uh, we've got word that Egypt is seeking another round of wheat here today as far as new information. And uh, on this one, the trade still wondering if the U.S. will be uh, will be competitive and will get any piece of that business as well. So certainly as far as wheat, we do have some negative information, which, uh, which we must know what the trade is a little concerned about uh, right now here. As far as uh, the main uh, main issues going on this week, obviously we uh, we had that Thursday uh, Thursday morning USDA report, which did provide some influence for trading. But also we had some other other issues going on as well this week. I mentioned the U.S. dollar here, of course, for, for today's action. But aside from that, this week was an important one also for weather, as we did transition uh, not just private forecasters who told us earlier in the week, but also the government uh, through the uh, NOAA agency. Uh, they also changed their view as far as La Nina. So we do have a significant change in, in viewpoint right now for the weather, and we have taken away some of the bullish issues which have been supporting some of these contracts here to speak of. Right now, latest uh, as far as the La Nina discussion, uh, we will have slightly drying conditions going into this, uh, uh, going into spring, uh, March, April, maybe into May. But certainly by May on out, uh, forecasters now suggest La Nina will not be will not be an issue, and we will have normal summer precip. So bottom line here, as far as that goes, uh, the market's basically pricing in the idea we're going to have ample acres, extra acres getting planted during this dry period, and then normal rainfalls. So essentially an ideal forecast as far as uh, as far as yield uh, yield issues go. So keep that in mind as well here. As far as today's action uh, on corn, funds sold about 8,000 contracts. Uh, this uh, certainly we're not able to uh, to see as much excitement as as people were hoping to based off this morning's purchase from Egypt of 240,000 tons of U.S. U.S. corn. Uh, on the soybean side, funds actually were net buyers of about a thousand contracts here. Uh, we will note that uh, China bought 120,000 tons of U.S. soybeans, uh, so this keeps those hopes alive of China maybe buying some more beans here in the next few weeks. Uh, so that's uh, certainly uh, helping them as well. Also, we do have some forecasters pointing out maybe next week might be a little drying, maybe a little hotter than uh, than hoped uh, down in Brazil. At this point, this is not a view shared by all forecasters, but we will note that some of that talk was also going on here uh, today or on midday or so. Over on livestock, we can point out uh, on the cattle, uh, down about $1.40. We did see yesterday, we saw an uh, dressed cash cattle trade, uh, 198 last week. Yesterday's action was 195. Uh, we see today, right now, as of, at the time of this peak, uh, we are see the uh, live base trade in Nebraska trading down about $1 at 123. Keep in mind, Nebraska has been trading at about a dollar premium to the Kansas Texas trade. So this means Kansas Texas could trade a dollar lower than last week, and that would put them at maybe 122. So perhaps later this afternoon, the central and southern plains will get going here. But the net result as far as action today on the cattle, down a dollar on, on uh, cash cattle for the week. So in the past three weeks, we've now taken off uh, uh, about $4 or so uh, compared to the 126 high we had a few weeks ago. On the uh, hog side, down a thirty, down a dollar thirty-five here. So this week we had a, a moderate rally here, and as we uh, finish up the week, we're having a moderate break here. So as far as hog prices, not much of a change for the week as a whole. We do have some people, just like on the cattle side, suggesting that maybe some pork demand is suffering right now as consumers are paying down some bills that they racked up over the holidays. So at this point, we have a, a little negative trend, a little negative feelings as far as livestock leading into next week. Uh, as far as Allendale's view, we certainly feel that that will lead through most of the next week as far as this slight tone in, in uh, livestock for right now here. But uh, overall, as far as things going on in the future, uh, keep in mind next week we will have announcements from USDA, and Newswires will carry all kinds of stories, what they call the baseline numbers. So USDA does two separate kind of bigger picture issues, uh, bigger picture projections. On these baseline numbers, they actually started way back in November making these numbers up. 
They actually make up some estimates for both old crop as well as new crop. In fact, they go a full 10 years out projections, and these are projections made for budget people. So they made these numbers back in November. So we will see some delayed, some maybe some off numbers because they're using the November WASD report to make these supply demand estimates here. The next, the real set of numbers that we uh, we all pay attention to will be the Ag Forum. USDA has their own conference that they do each year, February 23rd and 24th. Uh, now, honestly, as far as corn, the baseline and the Ag Forum numbers may not be too different, though, for corn at least. Uh, keep in mind, back in November, as we do right now, everybody in the, in the industry has been talking about higher acres. So USDA will show that on their 2013-2012 numbers. So this is kind of like a, a preview to USDA's preview, actually, for these higher new crop supplies, which are going to be hitting this market here in 2012-13. If you have any questions about markets, marketing, or any issues like that, feel, feel free to give us a call here at Allendale, 1-800-262-7538.